Welcome to Knowledgeable Aging. I'm your host, Jason Kotar. Joining us today to talk about employing ergonomics for injury prevention is Maher Karma. Maher is an occupational therapist and certified ergonomic assessment specialist, author, educator, and clinician. He has consulted the federal government as well as private corporations. For over 20 years, he has treated individuals with musculoskeletal injuries. A graduate with master's and doctoral degrees in occupational therapy, he has practiced in various types of healthcare settings in areas of neurological, orthopedic, and geriatric rehabilitation. He has lectured locally and internationally, serves as an adjunct professor at several universities, functions as a mentor for graduate students, and has participated and organized several healthcare conferences and events. As an entrepreneur, he currently serves as a consultant in the area of aging in place. In this capacity, his company provides a full service line of accessibility based home safety assessments, design, modifications, and equipment for sake of creating a customized, friendlier, accessible, and safer home environment that meets the individual's needs, goals, abilities, and limitations. Man, how are you doing today, my hair? Fabulous, fabulous. Did I did I do a good enough job for you? It's, you've got uh, quite a bit of experience, and I'm excited to have you here today. So thank you very much. Thank you. It's my honor and pleasure to be here, and I'm, I'm very uh, grateful for the opportunity and looking forward to sharing some good information with great folks out there. Very good, very good. Well, before we get started, just a little housekeeping for those joining us today. If you have any questions, type those into the box, and time permitting at the end, we will do our best to uh, get those questions answered. So, Maher, employing ergonomics for injury prevention. Yes, yes. So, this is this is a topic that is uh, it pertains to everyone uh, in every aspect of our days, whether it's someone working in the office or a, a mother taking care of her children or a teacher or someone working in a factory, everybody is being affected by ergonomics. And we're going to go over some basics. Uh, I want to hopefully present information that everybody can take home and say, you know, I learned something to how I can minimize the injury. And I want to make it as uh, uh, friendly as possible. I don't want to introduce any technical terms that would be boring. So we will be identifying different ways that people get basically injured and how to prevent those injuries in a nutshell. Gotcha. So, so you know, I, I get into ergonomics, and this is the busiest slide, I, I uh, promise. Uh, I'm not going to read it. But, you know, as a clinician, you know, we, we treated people with back injuries and with shoulder injuries and with wrist injuries and with neck injuries. And then we send them off, and people come back about six and eight months later, say, you know what, I get better with therapy, but I went back to work, I'm doing the same thing, you know, what do you do? Um, uh, I, I work uh, at a keyboard in the office, I'm working at a factory, I work at a dental office, and I do the same motions again and again, and, you know, I get injured again. Now I have the wrist uh, pain again, or my neck hurts, or something like that. So... I, I dug deeper into this topic, and that's when I tripped into ergonomics that we're going to define in a minute. And I realized that we have to address what people do at work and guide them uh, through uh, the motions and the techniques that they employ so we can have resilient and sustainable outcomes. So ergonomics, you know, is not a new word. Is not a new uh, terminology. It's been known for almost like 130 years or so, and it's basically derived from. Uh, we'll go back to that screen. Uh, the principles or laws of work, and in my mind, you know, it's how you make the environment conducive and friendly and injury-free to the uh, individual or to the worker or to the person. So you know, just to find out if this is a relevant problem. And if this is an issue that we have to deal with, you know, I got some uh, uh, graphs here from Department of Labor and from other resources. If you look at the left side the graph, uh, people who are 65 and above lost about 15 days of work uh, per year due to ergonomic-related injuries. 
meaning repetitive work and back issues and stuff like that. Now, if you look at the right side graph, it talks about different body parts that have been injured. And you can see that the most uh, uh, prevalent and the most uh, recurrent injury was low back pain. And, but every joint of the body has been affected. And it's been costing quite some penny. So how much does it cost? We'll see that on the next screen. Uh, if you look at the very first uh, bar on the right side, it says repetitive motions involving uh, micro tasks. So just repetitive injuries, people working uh, in the lab doing you know the same motions again and again or working as a pharmacist and they have to basically refill the bottles and they work uh, in construction. Repetitive motion cost the economy about three billion dollars in 2016. Three billion. I'm not saying wow. three thousand or three million. Three billion. So it's it's a serious problem and that's why we're talking about how we prevent those injuries and how we contribute to staying healthy and helping the economy all together. So people start having different kind of problems uh, doing the same motions, using the same muscle groups over and over and over. Yes, our body is resilient, our body is awesome and it heals itself. But at one point, if I'm reaching overhead and this is what I'm doing for about eight hours out of the day, eventually those muscles start tearing up gradually and they start getting inflamed, and I may have a, a bit like some sort of ganglion cyst. The nerves get impinged and, and pinched, and mm -hmm. the whole area be, uh, starts wearing out, and eventually some people end up having rotator cuff tear. Some people have inflammation uh, that we call tendinitis. Some people have carpal tunnel symptoms. Some people may have trigger fingers. Some people may have tennis elbows, and on and on and on. Yep. So when the injury happens, I'm going to look from the top and move clockwise. People start having pain. The joint becomes swollen. It becomes hard to move. Uh, they develop some stiffness and start losing flexibility and waking up in the morning with stiffness and swelling. That triggers more pain and the, the joint becomes unstable because you're not moving it as much. And then the muscle starts uh, start wasting we start losing muscle bulk, uh, we develop weakness, and people start uh, having awkward motions because they're trying to compensate, and that triggers another level of injury. So there are three types of uh, ergonomic injuries. The most prevalent that we'll be talking about uh, quite a bit will be the repetitive motion, and then there is forceful exertion using force uh, when you are drilling and when you are trying to scrape objects and stuff like that. And then the uh, repetitive awkward postures, breaching and bending over in wrong positions. We'll elaborate on each one of those. Very good. So uh, high test repetitive motions, those are motions that we repeat again and again. It could be motion that we repeat with our shoulders. It could be with our wrists, it could be our fingers, it could be using a pair of pliers, it could be some uh, dental uh, tools, uh, it could be we are cutting, you know, uh, working at a factory, it could be like you are even, you know, just preparing boxes and assembling boxes. All of that, you know, is repetitive work, you are using the same type of motions, the same type of muscles. Excessive force, you know, it could be that, you know, an electrician may be reaching overhead and he's working and that puts a lot of tension and stress on the neck. It could be a mechanic trying to use wrenches but he's under the car and he's using a lot of uh, force in order to uh, 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 unscrew a screw or a nut. And then the awkward postures, you know, even, you know, if you go see your dentist, you know, he's hunching over and uh, I've met a lot of eye doctors who have back problems because of the way that they were looking at the microscope whenever they are operating. So nobody's exempt and everybody has to watch their body and see how can I work my body in the right posture and at the right rate. So combination of force, repetition and posture may lead to pain and cause us the problem. So those are the 
key elements that we have to keep in mind in order to eliminate the risk of injuries. People start having different types of symptoms. It could be just pain, pain that may uh, last uh, during the night and then it comes back during the daytime. Some swelling, inflammation, just very random types of symptoms and those symptoms may be very intermittent, very occasional and they become more uh, constant and longer term ones over the time. Yep. So, you know, we're going to talk about some more issues, but now we are going to get hints about things that we all could be at fault for. Posture. If you are sitting up straight, your the weight of your head could be 12 pounds. That's the average weight of our head. When you start leaning over and having hunched position, that weight is almost uh, tripled and goes up to 32 pounds of weight on your spine. And when you have uh, three inches forward of a hunching over posture, that weight could be about 42 pounds. So good posture is one thing that I teach my patients all the time. And it could be the fix for a lot of the unpleasant symptoms that people experience in their arms, as well as symptoms that they experience in their shoulders. Good posture in sitting, you know, it's very important. If you look at uh, uh, picture number one, that's good posture, and and that's what's going to maintain good alignment and good symmetry, eliminating an impingement. When you start hunching over, you start basically forcing the migration of the disc, which is an integral part of our spine. You basically shove it backwards, and uh, in picture three, you can see that it, it starts pinching some of the nerves and the tissue, which may generate and produce symptoms in the arms or the legs. So how do you address the ergonomic issues? There are five different techniques or controls. One is that you're going to look at the design of the station. could be like, you know, as simple as if you're working at a station, you want to adjust it to your height so you're not hunching over. So you're restructuring the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, work practice controls, you want to look at your posture, you want to look at yourself and what, what can you do within your body in order to eliminate the injury. Job rotation, if you have, let's say, uh, if you work at a copy shop or at a laundromat, can you fold some of the clothes for about four hours and then go and do it something different? Or can you work different shifts and that kind of stuff? Uh, Counteractive stretch breaks, it's very integral and very important for us to stop and take breaks and stretch. And we're going to talk about some of those basic stretches in a minute. And then personal protective equipment, using back belts, gloves, masks. And I want to mention that there's no clear evidence that back belts prevent back injuries. They just give you a hint that you should not be bending. But they don't stop you from getting injured. They just help you decrease the frequency and the risk. Now, and my hair, that was one question I was going to ask you is that th there's quite a bit of prevalence of back belts, uh, and, but you say there's no no scientific proof that they actually do work, right? Th that's right. That's right. If it does anything, Jason, it basically gives you a hint that you cannot be bending at your waist. You have to bend at your knees. But they, if you just use it and think, you know what, I can lift any weight because I huh. have a back belt, absolutely not. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Don't use it as a false sense of, uh, uh, you know, to be a, a superhuman. Exactly, exactly. Yes, yes. You know, based on OSHA, which is the uh, Occupation Safety and Health Association, the government agency that mm -hmm. basically uh, proposed guidelines for uh, ergonomics, anybody, no matter how strong you are, your weight capacity is 51 pounds. And that's what you'll see on different... Uh, 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 job descriptions that you should be able to lift about 51 pounds. Uh, so the fact that you have a back belt does not mean that you're going to be a superman. Um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so engineering controls, this is a good example of, you know, if I'm, for instance, I'm 6'2", and, you know, if I'm working at a station that is being used by someone who's 5'8", that does not mean that that, that workstation is going to fit both of us. So we have to work at different heights and assure that we have good uh, posture uh, in order to eliminate any back pain. So adjusting the environment, yes. Uh, gotcha. different, 
different equipment that we use in our household. You know, I, I mentioned uh, uh, breastfeeding mommy. You know, uh, I've treated mommies who hunch over to create curtail and, and, you know, to take care of their babies and they end up having uh, uh, chest discomfort because they are trying to hug the baby and they lose their good posture. So it's very important to practice that. When you are giving the baby the bottle, if you have a bottle that has this bent, bent angle, the baby is going to keep the rest in good alignment, in good posture, in good uh, uh, symmetry, uh, and they're not going to be bending if the rest. Same thing applies to hammers. When the tool itself has a bend, has an angle, that means that you don't have to be uh, working too hard, stressing out your joint. Toothbrushes, same thing. You know, now we've seen more and more toothbrushes coming out. And they are larger grips. They are much easier and safer for our joints. Uh, even nail clippers, you know, ones, there are different ones. So you want to use ones that are keeping your hand and, and fingers in good alignment. So you're not having to assume awkward positions that will stress out your joints. Uh, snow shuffling, I actually spoke and lectured on ergonomics of snow shuffling. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, it, the, the, the height and the, the description of snow shovels uh, that anybody uses does not mean that is going to be right for you. You know, if, you're, uh, if your child is, let's say, you know, 5'5", uh, five, five, your snow shovel as someone who's 6'5", need to be taller. And that bend that you see in that snow shovel helps eliminate the tension on your back. The snow shovel should be like two-thirds of your height. And I, I actually wrote guidelines about how you should dice and slice snow before you pick it up. And yeah, fun stuff. Or, or about hair, you could just you could just move somewhere warm and not have to deal with snow. I mean, that's an alternative, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's fun, you know. I have it once a year. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. And the last thing that I want to say here, ergonomics and safety at home. And of course, you know, as Jason mentioned, I I do this home safety assessment to help uh, seniors and people with disabilities stay at home. So you want to have the grab bars. You want to have handles. You want to make sure that the bathroom is accessible and. Uh, easy for you to navigate. So it's fit for your needs rather than you having to bend uh, backwards to use that bathroom safely. Right. So another example here, if we have 150 pounds and you are using, uh, you're lifting that uh, package in different positions, you know, it could be you, it could be as easy as uh, uh, 66 uh, pound of a, of a package and if you look at the very first column on the right where the uh, the image shown a guy bending over that same package could be uh, multiplied and it feels like a 748 pounds because of the bad posture this is how people get injured this is how people have back injuries and start having sciatica where tension of the nerves cause low back pain and low leg pain. So this, this shows good and bad postures. So, you know, if you are to carry anything, anything, you know, whether it's a bottle of water or a gallon of milk or your toddler or, or uh, some shopping, you have to bend at the knees. So the bottom pictures uh, where that gentleman is bending at the waist, this is how people get injured. This is the worst that you can do. It, it shows, it shows, it says the wrong way. And the right way, you have to bend your knees. The muscles in our legs are intended to help us pick up objects, and the muscles in the back are only supposed to stabilize our back, not be used for hard work. So please bend your knees and keep your waist straight at any time. All right. So we spoke about some stretches. Stretch it, you know, our muscles, our joints uh, deserve worthy and need for us to stretch them to take them through different motions that will help them stay healthy, uh, loose, and flexible. So th this image shows different basic, very basic office stretches that you can do in your office. Uh, 
every hour, every two hours, you should try to get away from your desk and take a walk, take a walk go get a cup of coffee, a cup of water, speak to someone uh, rather than emailing a colleague in your office. Go make a copy, uh, you know, or, or be nice to someone, take him a cup of water. How's that? <laughs> and, you know, uh, just stretch, move your neck as you're walking, practice some stretches. So break the repetitive motions uh, that you have assuming, been assuming for quite some time by just watching your monitor and sitting and, and doing nothing or doing the same kind of lifting in the, uh, in the factory. Uh, so I've, got a question. I've, got a, I've got a question, Maher. Uh, the stretching, you mentioned every hour, every two hours, get out and move. What do you recommend as far as doing these stretching exercises? Should you do this every time you get up or are you just trying to do it a couple times a day? What do you recommend? I, I would recommend doing those stretches multiple times during the day. You could choose different ones. You could do one for your neck in the morning and then one for your, some for your shoulder later on and maybe uh, others for your back. Your body would want to be uh, loose and it wants you to release the tension that builds up because of the uh, prolonged sitting and repetitive motion. So choose different ones. Maybe you can put this, there are different apps that you can download on your phone that would remind you of those stretches. Uh, or you could basically uh, post like one of those uh, sheets in front of you at your desk and, and remind yourself. Uh, or at, at the least you can put reminders on your phone so the alarm could go off every like maybe two or three, four hours so you can do some stretches. Very good. Uh, there are actually, uh, you know, our eyes hurt because we stare at, you know, monitors and digitals. I know Jason has a different uh, webinar specifically handling workstation uh, ergonomics, so I don't want to talk much about that, but, you know, we, we forget to blink when we are sitting for a certain period of time at the monitor, and that would dries up uh, our eyes and make them feel sore. So you have to put uh, reminders for you to do the stretches and to blink and all that good stuff. Everyday ergonomics, you know, we are all at fault of uh, misusing our bodies. And when we are, you know, getting up in age, uh, our body starts telling us that, you know what, uh, I, I can't do this, I get tired. And because, you know, repetitive work and awkward positions, not only they cause pain, they cause, cause fatigue. So if you work within the alignment and symmetry and positions that, that your body like, you're going to find that, you know what, when I sit up straight, I have better ability to breathe. I can, I can focus better. I can see things better. I feel good. It, it enhances even my confidence versus being uh, hunched over and kyphotic. So sitting up, I want you to start looking at the image from the lady sitting in the test chair. And what's behind here is something called a lumbar roll. I highly recommend that you use that if you spend a lot of time driving. If you're a truck driver, if you're an Uber driver, if you spend a lot of time in the office, you need one of those lumbar rolls that you slide behind the small of your back because that's going to help your posture tremendously, uh, eliminate the chances of pinching and causing posture problems. So you slide the, the, the roll behind your back and that's going to basically straighten your shoulders, uh, open up your chest, uh, help your uh, alignment. Uh, we do a lot of, we use your digitals frequently and you have to keep it in alignment. If, if you have your phone, you want to be nice to your neck and bring the phone up rather than looking down. Sleeping, you could use a roll behind your neck uh, as well as a pillow uh, between your knees to maintain the alignment as well. That helps people with back and spine issues. Very good. Uh, just uh, some random pictures. Keep good alignment, eliminate bad postures, reaching over, bending over. Be nice to your body. Treat your body, you know, the way that uh, you want your body to serve you for a certain period of time. Well, Maher, thank you. We have quite a few questions here, so if you don't mind, let's, let's jump into them. The first question is, how do I know that a product is ergonomically designed? That, that's a very good question, Jason. If you, if the product, you know, uh, one that you have to use it and causes discomfort in your shoulder or in your wrist, that tells you that 
you know, after using it for, let's say, you know, let's use, let's say you're using a drill just to uh, drill some screws. Uh, you you know that the grip could be too small or too uh, or uh, not right for you. So you wanna look, you wanna when you go to the store, you wanna find comfortable grip. You wanna find ones that have a little bit of a bend in them. Uh, those usually are ones that can help you uh, maintain the alignment of your wrist because the tool itself is conformed to the needs of your joint. Okay. Um, another question, what is the best way to improve my posture? I know you touched on it, but what is the best way to improve your posture? I can tell you, uh, as I treat people in the clinic, I tell them that posture correction is exercise number one. And the simplest and the easiest way would be, I would say, like, back up against the wall and see if you can stand up straight against the wall, bring your shoulders back uh, with, with your heels touching the uh, wall as, as well. If you feel like your shoulders are too far rounded forward and you can't, you have, you are struggling trying to roll your shoulders back, that tells you that you have work to do. And consequently, I would say spend maybe like three to five minutes every day just trying to stand against the wall, find you a good spot and do that. And for sure, uh, use that lumbar roll uh, behind the small of your back in the office, in your car, uh, so you can maintain good posture. Uh, ergonomic injuries and low back injuries are very common among people who drive long distances like truck drivers. So because they don't keep good posture, they spend a lot of time in sustain in, in, in same positions. Uh, so that decreases the blood flow to their back and spine and they get out of the truck and they do heavy lifting and they, they get injured. So correcting the posture at least by using lumbar roll can be very helpful and eliminate a lot of injuries. Okay. Um, another question here. Is there a pillow you can recommend? You know, it's funny. I actually did some uh, reading and research to see uh, how can I answer that question for my patients. And I am against spending uh, expensive, you know, uh, dollars uh, towards a pillow. I would say, you know, you need to trial different pillows that you have in the house and it go as thin as possible. So uh, I don't want to name any brand names, but people talk to me about ergonomic pillows and stuff like that. I would want to say, you know, you could, if you have, let's say, asthma or COPD or breathing issues or sleep apnea, you could try to have your uh, pillows at an incline. That's fine. The issue is that you want to have your head in line with your back. You don't want your, your head sitting with three pillows and creating that curvature that will pinch the nerves in your neck. So gradually eliminate the number of fellows that you are using until you get to a comfy position, until you wake up in the morning and feel like, you know, I'm not having a numbness, I'm not having any weird feelings. That's when you know that you are having the right pillow. So you almost trial and error, right? Rather, you'd rather somebody, because not one pillow is the same for everybody, right? So you've just got to determine what's best for you. Absolutely. Absolutely, and uh, I know it's hard for us to be still in, in our sleep. You know, I wake, I, I sleep on my back, and I woke up, and I'm on my stomach, and, you know, it is what it is, but uh, when it comes to the pillows, you want to make sure that you go as thin as possible, and it, it's going to be a tweaking process. You're going to have to work on it over several weeks until you get to be comfy and, and happy with your pillow. Very good. Well, the last question, hold on, somebody just asked, can you recommend additional resources or reading material on ergonomics? I would say one of the uh, best resources that I continue to learn from and uh, would recommend that anybody should visit would be OSHA.gov. OSHA mm -hmm. is O-S-H-A. That's the government agency that uh, outlines guidelines related to ergonomics. And even that we touch on very generic concepts today, there are very specific uh, ergonomic guidelines related to uh, lab workers, related to construction workers, related, related to neat factories, and on and on. So if you are interested in learning more about specific industries or just generally learning more about ergonomics, I would say go to OSHA.gov 
that's probably one of the most trusted and resourceful uh, uh, sites that's out there. Well, very good. Well, Maher, I just want to say thank you for your time today. Uh, a lot to digest. I I won't be mad at you for the comment about the snow because it is July. So <laughs> maybe we can talk about that and maybe a webinar later in the day, but not right now, man. It's the middle of summer. I uh, I, I don't want to think about snow. It was 103 uh, degrees yesterday in Maryland. So, you know, <laughs> I don't talk about snow will we'll bring some chilly feeling to <laughs> Oh, very good. Well, Maher, how can how can people find you? <laughs> so you know you can you can visit uh, uh, our website, which is massa-medical.com, and the email would be info at massa-medical.com. Info at massa-medical.com. If you have any questions, any inquiries, I'd be happy to answer them uh, to to the best of my ability. I'll be. Uh, able to send you some more resources so don't don't feel shy feel free to reach out and I'll, I'll be happy to help in any shape or form well very good well once again my hair i really do appreciate your time today look forward to a follow-up webinar with you uh till next time i'm your host jason kotar with knowledgeable aging <laughs>